other key factors that relate to learning a second language and what the teacher does in terms of the giving it phase include explanations. And here we want to follow uh, the same piece of information on short, clear, and precise. What is more helpful to learners than explanations, in fact, are examples. And many teachers try to offer an example off the top of their heads. This is an area where the planning and preparation of three to eight examples is really a good investment of a teacher's time because then those examples are ready and they're not incorrect and that can be of special um, relevance to students. If it's possible, depending on what you're teaching, it is also useful to include patterns. And by patterns, we can also include something like an acronym. Sometimes it's easier to remember something through an acronym. The sequence in which you present um, new information, and of course we're always trying to follow uh, 7 plus or minus 2 Miller's magical number, is also important. And as you uh, introduce a set of, for example, new words, if you can attend to the order in which you are presenting them, and if there's some repetition involved, to maintain that same order for three or four or five times of repetition before you mix the order up, you will find that the, there will be um, a greater retention of language. So remember that when we're trying to build student investment and desire, we want to give them relevance and purpose in a variety of ways. We want to use mnemonics to facilitate their remembering. And we also want to keep their minds as active as possible. So this means that we would look to strategies that come out of inquiry-based learning, where we're asking a whole variety of questions, or helping, and through those questions, helping students to discover things that are of interest to them, or uh, make their own personal connections. When learning a second language, there is a great deal of repetition and review that is necessary because uh, we need to retain particularly vocabulary but also structure. So the giving it stage can also include question answering or question asking. So that means that we want to look at two particular types of questions, the display question and the referential question. The display question means you already know the answer. So if I say to you, what is this or what is this, and it's obvious and they know the answer in their mother tongue, that means that you're using a display question. There's a right or wrong answer. When we look at referential questions, we're looking at questions that can still draw upon a more um, limited vocabulary on the part of the student, but that will also help us learn new things about them. So when I say, what is this, and I'm holding up a piece of pizza, that is a display question. But if I say, what's your favorite food, and someone says pizza, that would be a referential question. The next thing that will keep active minds is helping students to notice. Noticing, we know from the research, helps students uh, develop curiosity or builds on their curiosity and helps them to um, want to learn something. So sometimes by asking a question, we can get, develop that noticing skill. And this is especially useful when we're dealing with uh, elements of form or when we're teaching grammar. Another important decision that a teacher is going to have to make when using the classroom language and giving instruction in the classroom uh, target language is whether an activity that we're going to do is going to be inductive or deductive. And both ways are important, and it's good to have a balance of both types. These are, um, as I've said, ways that will help to keep the mind active.